Text-only mode. Hello, and welcome to the Fairfield University Alumni Career Webinar Series. My name is Julie Tizzoli. I'm from the class of 1985, and I'm the Manager of Employer Relations and Alumni Career Development. Our web webinar today is Resumes That Rock, Beat the Competition with Your Resume. I want to welcome and thank all of our alumni who have taken the time out of their day to join us. All alumni career webinars are recorded and can be found on our website at fairfield.edu slash alumni career. The recording of this webinar will be posted in three to five business days. So be sure to check out this webinar again if you need it or and all of our webinars in the job search and professional development topics. They're all recorded and stored there. If you experience any technical difficulties, please email me or send a message through the chat box so I can try to help you. And at the end of the presentation, there will be a survey, so please take a minute to fill it out and provide any feedback and ideas for future webinars. We have a full agenda today, but Annette will be able to answer some questions at the end of the presentation. So when you have a question, please type it into the question box as you think of it. I will pose them to Annette for you. The question box is located in the control bar and will show up when you click on the Go To Webinar View menu in the upper right hand corner. I am now pleased to welcome and introduce our webinar presenter today, Annette Richmond. Annette is the Principal of Career <coughs> Intelligence, Resume Writing and Career Services. She a is a certified resume writer, certified LinkedIn profile writer, and a former recruiter. She uses her training, talent, and unique perspective to create eye-catching, results-driven res resumes that tell her client's unique story. Over the years, Annette's career advice has been featured by Monster, Vault, Job Hero, The Career News, Business Insider, and The Wall Street Journal. She has been published by Forbes, The Chicago Tribune, The Huffington Post, Talent Culture, and Resumes for, resumes for Dummies. <laughs> Annette holds a Bachelor of Arts degree from Sacred Heart University and a Master of Arts degree in Applied Psychology from Fairfield University. Yay! She is a proud <laughs> member of the National Resume Writers Association, Career Directors International, Professional Association of Resume Writers and Career Coaches, and Society for Human Resources <coughs> Management. So Annette, welcome and thank you for spending the time with us today. I'm going to hand it over to you now to get started. Okay, well thank you so much Julie for that nice introduction and thank you for having me today. Um, we will be going through a lot of information during this webinar today. As Julie mentioned, it will be recorded and you can certainly answer questions at the end. So let me just give you a quick overview, a little bit more about who I am. Um, I started 20 something years ago as an associate editor for a magazine back when it was a print publication. I moved from there after I got my um, master's at Fairfield University, I became a vocational counselor at a nonprofit training and placement facility. That's how I sort of started down this career path. When I was working there, I was looking online on the fledgling internet, internet this is back in 1998, uh, for information and found the information lacking. So I found it careerintelligence.com, which is a job site for women, um, but I would say probably 40% of the readers are men. It's still up there. I write for it. I have other people that write for it as well. Um, as Julie mentioned, I did spend about two and a half years working as a recruiter. I worked contingency where I was on a commission for a firm in Dallas and placed clients primarily in the digital marketing space. Um, Later on, I was retained by a publisher in New York City to find some candidates for them, and which was nice because I got paid whether they hired my candidates or not, as long as they thought I was sending them good people. I am now a resume writer, certified resume writer, and certified LinkedIn profile writer. I started doing this when I was helping my, my candidates with their resumes to get them through to the hiring manager, and I decided to go into that myself. Okay, so let's get going. We have a lot to cover today. We're going to be talking about taking your do-it-yourself resume 
and turning it into an interview generating marketing document. So we're going to talk about these various buckets. First we're going to talk about removing any missteps, then we're going to talk about how to add great content and I'm going to give you some formulas for that and then we're going to finish with style. We're going to talk about how you could format your resume to make it look you know a little jazzier because content is king but you want to package that content in a really nice package. Now and for your, the stags um, because Julie asked we're also going to be talking a little bit about cover letters and I'm going to go through the anatomy of a cover letter, a formula that you can use for that as well and um, give you an example, show you uh, an example of that. And then as another bonus, um, LinkedIn has a new job seeker program which is free and I'm going to go through that with you at the end after we fi finish the rest of the webinar. Um, it's something that you can use right away and it helps you sort of look for a job without the boss finding out. Okay, so let's get going. Oh, I'm sorry, one more thing. Um, I am giving away a 10-point resume cheat sheet, uh, which will go over many of the um, things that I'm going to talk about in formatting. If you email me, I'm happy to send that to you. There's certainly no charge for that. And I will have a special stag offer at the very end. Okay, now let's get going. So before you start um, working on your resume, you really want to remove any missteps things that are going to make you look outdated, over the hill, and things that may be irrelevant. And there's a bunch of reasons for this. So things that make you look outdated, the objective statement. You know, before I give, <coughs> excuse me, a talk on resumes, I always think maybe I should leave this out and then I get someone sending me a resume, a potential client with the objective statement on top. Now this is bad for a few reasons. Um, it's not used anymore, you know, so it doesn't make you look outdated. Um, but also an objective statement is all about you, what you're looking for, you know, um, and, and they're all pretty much the same. Everybody wants to look, uh, work for, you know, a great employer where they're working with wonderful colleagues, they have opportunities for professional development. So, you know, it's kind of a waste and it's also a waste of space. As you know, if you've tried to write a resume, you know, you have to make the best use of that space. You want to stay away from outdated formats. Now, outdated formats can have, be something with an objective statement. They might be something sometimes where people have the education on top, although, you know, they've been out of school for 10 or 15 years. Uh, they might be in a format that's too long or too short and even black and white you know you want to add a little color today and we'll talk more about that later an AOL email address I know people shudder when I say this but among career professionals um, an AOL email address makes you look old you know I had one too they were really cool back when AOL started not so much anymore. Um, save those for your family and friends. But uh, and and Yahoo also is you know rather dated at at this point. So get an email you know like a Gmail is kind of current right now and used by a lot of people and it's free. So you know you might want to have that email address that you only use for your job search. Um, just make sure when you get one of those that you know it's not something cute. Um, you would be surprised some of the emails that I, I see from people. Um, you know, you don't want to be the sassy woman or the biker guy or even the car guy. Um, you want something that's your name or a variation on your name uh, to use professionally. Okay, over the hill. So a lot of people, I, I uh, Julie mentioned to me some of the years, and I know some of the people are like me. You know, you're you're not really young anymore. You're not old, but you know, you don't want to be taken for being over the hill. One of the things to get around that is you don't want to include old employment. Um, the rule of thumb. I mean, with a resume, there is no hard and fast rule with the exception perhaps that you don't want typos and spelling errors. However, 
the rule of thumb is you go back maybe 10 to 15 years, maybe 20 years if you're more senior, but you also want to spend less time on the older positions. Um, everything doesn't get equal weight. Another thing is graduation dates, and I see this even on LinkedIn, people putting high school. You know, you don't want to do that on your LinkedIn, um, even graduation dates on your resume. Unless you're, um, you know, a new grad who, or someone who's graduated in the last five years, that might be something, uh, maybe you've gone back to school, you recently, many of my clients come to me, they've recently received an MBA. So they want to put the dates on that. But um, if you've been out of school more than five years, you could really just drop those dates. And also, uh, another thing for new grads, if you're just graduating, um, a GPA is great, you know, provided you have a solid GPA. If you're, if you're older, people don't really care so much. So you, know, you don't really want to include, include something like that either black and white. Again, resumes today, professionally written resumes, basically all have a little bit of color. And again, we'll talk about that later. You know, it doesn't necessarily have to be bright, vibrant color, but you want to stay away from just black and white. Okay, irrelevant. <laughs> Excuse me. You don't want to have information, hobbies, personal information, or assume duties. Now, hobbies are, you know, I, I still see guys send resumes in to me, you know, they, they play golf. Or uh, my favorite is the woman who had, she's an avid salsa dancer. If it's not relevant to your target position, it really doesn't belong on your resume. The exception might be if you play golf, but you're in sales, maybe that's relevant. Um, if you're a, a new grad or a re fairly recent grad and you have a hobby or something where you show uh, leadership, for example, I worked with a client a couple of years ago who was um, moving up and targeting something of a more leadership role. Now, he happened to be a scuba diver. But not only was he a diver, but he taught diving. So he had people... Um, relying on him in sort of life and death situations where he was teaching new divers. So that was something that showed leadership and so it was relevant. But you need to think about things when you put them on your um, resume. Personal information, again, I still see that. You don't want to include personal information um, that you're married and with children, uh, no photos. HR doesn't like photos because they can be um, subject to possible discrimination or people saying they were discriminated against. So you don't want to put that information on there either. I always also um, suggest that my, my clients um, stay away from anything that's controversial. If you're um, working on you know a political campaign or if you're volunteering in a religious organization you may just want to think about that because you don't know how people may react to that also assume duties you know there's certain things that everybody does when they're in a certain position so you don't want to talk about every single little thing that you do Again, a lot of the reason for leaving these things off is you need to make the best use of that real estate space. Okay, so now once we've gotten rid of all the stuff we don't want, we're going to add great content. So you want to have a little branding, you want to have a skill summary, and you really, really want to focus on your achievements, things that are going to sell you to a potential employer. So branding is really, you know, there's a lot of talk about branding, and I've heard it, I don't know, maybe 15 years ago, I first started hearing about sort of personal branding aside from products. Um, and what it really is, is what makes you different from all the other candidates applying for this particular job? So how do you do that? So there's a few things you can do. Um, one is a summary statement. 
which is sort of a snapshot of what you have to offer. And I'm going to show you an example of one. But it, it gives someone, an employer, an immediate sense of, you know, a little bit about who you are, um, the strengths, what you have to offer. And it's maybe four lines, um, depending. But again, uh, one thing that needs to be done with all of your content I don't want to forget to mention is that it needs to be substantiated further down in your resume. So you can do it at the top of your resume with core strengths, and I'll show you a few examples about those. And you can do that with a statement, a recommendation, or a quote. So here's a summary station and a summary statement. And I know it looks really big on this screen. It was not that big on the resume. So um, here is someone who was in sales. This is from uh, one of my former clients. Talks about his um, award winning. This person was award winning, had won, had won many awards over the years. Um, was able to lead people and really uh, get them to work towards a common uh, objective. That was part of his management style, and he talked a little bit about that on the resume. Engaging communicator, um, talking about cultivating strategic relationships. Now, within the resume, there were examples of all of these things. So it's not just what this person um, says, but it needs to be substantiated. One thing that worked for him was a quote that he gave me, um, described by senior management as low maintenance, high output, a strong competitor, cool under pressure. Now that's something that tells you certainly a little bit about that person. Um, a little bit injects a little bit of personality. So core strengths, these are things that I, I use on the top of the resumes with my clients. I know other resume writers do, that, uh, do this as well. Um, it's something that immediately conveys a message. Um, someone who is proactive, strategic, and analytical is a little bit different from someone who's insightful, knowledgeable, and driven. So again, whatever you say at the top, because you want to you know, immediately convey value, you need to substantiate further down in your resume. So a statement, um, you can use a, a recommendation, a quote. Now the statement might be um, your philosophy, um, I've had clients use a quote about their management style uh, on their resume, uh, quotes from a previous boss, um, it, with permission of course, can be very effective. I know people in healthcare who um, sometimes it can be very effective for them to use uh, quotations, things that have been said to them or written to them by patients. So, you know, if you're in sales, it can be really valuable. Um, or you might want to use your favorite quote, something that speaks to your um, philosophy on management or just your philosophy on life. But part of these things are to tell people a little bit about you besides the nuts and bolts, your skills and achievements. So a skill summary you want to use for a few reasons. First of all, um, it can be good for an applicant tracking system. You want to be careful that you don't want to sort of stuff your resume with keywords. But using um, keywords can be effective. It also helps recruiters who are scanning your resume. I'm sure you must have heard of the ladder study that talks about recruiters spending six seconds before making a decision. Now, when I was a recruiter, I spent longer, and most of the colleagues, the people I know now, spend longer too, but they don't have a lot of time. And you also have to realize that there are other human readers. If you are sending a resume to a small firm, the resumes may be given to the receptionist who's not that busy. I was hired myself several years ago. Someone was tasked with pulling resumes 
offline and going through them and picking out a few based on the job description they were handed. So you need to make your skills easily picked out um, by anyone who happens to be reading them. You know, people talk and talk and talk about the applicant tracking systems, but you have to remember, you know, you're writing for humans as well. So here's an example of a um, skill summary. This person, uh, this was one of my clients who worked in public relations. So these were uh, her strengths. And um, you can see market research. She also did some recruitment, public relations, account management, process redesign. So this was sort of covered a wide range of um, strengths. And I'll be showing you some samples of resume so you'll be able to see this uh, right within the resume. Now you want to have achievements on your resume. You know, responsible for, duties included, are not compelling. You may be responsible for the um, Northeast region, but does that mean are they successful? Maybe not. You know, um, things like duties included doesn't say anything about how well you may have performed those duties. So you need to focus on WIIFM, that's station WIIFM, what's in it for me. You know, we all listen to that all day long, and employers are no different. So you want to um, focus on that. So how do you do it? So there's a simple formula. You want to look for, um, look at your career and look at your, say, your current position, and you want to look for a challenge, the action, and the result. Now the challenge might be something you walk into. Maybe you are, um, walk in and the department is in chaos, or maybe morale is low with the company, um, maybe customers are unhappy, whatever the circumstance is. Maybe it's not when you first come on, maybe it's six months later something happens. It could be a um, change in company leadership. The action is what you do to make it better. Um, and the result, of course, is the impact that you have. Now, it, it, it's really, um, when you're thinking about this in terms of the action, a lot of people work on teams. Um, even if, if you're a, a new grad, you've probably worked on teams um, for your courses. Many of the courses today I know rely on teams to do projects. So you can think about it in those terms. When you're talking about the action, you don't want to just talk about the team success. I mean, you, you want to acknowledge that, but you also want to talk about your role in that. Maybe you were the de facto leader. Maybe you provided some particular knowledge that helped move things forward. Maybe you were the person who picked up the slack when things weren't getting done. So you want to always, of course, focus on the team and give them credit, but you want to talk about what you have done also. And when it comes to the results, what employers like, they like to see you saving time, saving money, making money. You want to quantify these things whenever possible. Now, when you're in sales, it's easier, perhaps, than in some other um, positions. However, I worked with clients in operations, uh, people in accounting, um, and in other positions who have redesigned processes within the company or maybe even just in their department. So instead of the person who was doing the uh, expense reports taking four days a month, the, the uh, new process allowed this to be done in two days a month, freeing that person to do, spend two days doing other things. That's of value. So you always want to think of the value um, quantifiable as much as possible. Now here's an example. Um, this was something that was taken from a client from several years ago, and but I love this. Um, 
spearheaded 30% reduction of product development cycle by joining forces with other departments. So not only do you have them, you know, reducing the product development cycle 30%, they were doing it with other departments. So that shows also communication and the ability to work together. Um, able to guide staff through the process improvement and redesign despite disruptive organizational changes. Now, this is something, um, again, these look big on the screen. They're much, much smaller on the resume. Um, so this person, there was a lot of uh, change in leadership in the company while he was in this position. But despite this, they were still able to get a lot done. So that really speaks to, um, to his ability as, as a leader. <coughs> Excuse me. OK. So now we're going to talk about finishing with style. We're going to talk about formatting and adding some tasteful color and interesting bullets so you can make your resume stand out and engaging when someone first sees it. it makes them want to pick it up and read it. So for the format, you want to have short paragraphs. Now when I say short, I mean you know three lines, maybe three and a half lines. You don't want to have big blocks of text which are uninviting to look at and difficult to read. You want to have a short paragraph or maybe a couple of short paragraphs depending on how long you were in that position and you know what level you were in, followed by maybe three to five bullets which are your achievements. So your bullets are going to be like what we just looked at. They're going to be achievements. Because bullets are used for emphasis, you know, and every single thing you do, you know, managing the team is not an achievement. You know, if you're the manager, it's kind of your job. So think of things like that when you're thinking about achievements. And you want to have white space. Occasionally I'll see resumes with, you know, teeny tiny space on the side. You don't want to go believe, um, smaller than 0.5, preferably a little bigger. And you want to have white space between the bullets. And there's you know, a lot of ways to do that. But you want to make your resume attractive as well as informative. So let's look at a few examples. <coughs> Excuse me. So now this person is director of marketing. Um, you can see we have the skills summary uh, at the top, uh, creative leader, agile communicator, strategic thinker. This is someone, um, these things are talked about further on in the resume. Some shading is used to draw attention to certain areas. Now here, we're using color, but we're using gray and blue. So it's not really jumping out at you, but it's engaging. You know, the bullets are, are navy blue, so it just gives it a little bit of, um, little bit of color. Next one is very different. This is someone that I worked with who was in sales, a real dynamo, and wanted, you know, wanted to use, um, we use orange, you know, to, to highlight her resume. Um, again, here is a quotation that sort of is her, you know, managing management style is, um, you know, leading others, not by commanding them, by um, influencing them. Again, this is a little bit different from the other one. We have some career highlights from different positions, um, followed by the skill summary. So again, very different from the previous resume. And a lot of this stuff is not all that hard to do. Finally, um, this is the last example I have for you of resumes. This person was a uh, controller. So again, very low key. Um, done in a more business-like uh, style, but still very subdued. Nothing like the previous resume that we saw. Now, you can easily add some color. You can go into the borders and shading on your word. Uh, you can just pick out. I've shown this example in red, but you can do this in different colors. You can put a box around. Uh, you can use a border. You just want to make sure that you're using the paragraph 
border so that it will go all the way across. Okay. Easy also to add some interesting bullets. You can go in and change, you know, pick bullets. Um, you can color them using the font color. Uh, some of these will not transfer if they are run through an ATS system. The characters may not transfer, but it really doesn't matter um, because they're, you know, a lot of these things that go through the ATS, and there's also the um, the Word document that the reader is going to be looking at. So uh, it's very easy very easy to go in and do this and play around you, know, you can play around with it until you find something that looks appealing to you okay so here we go for Julie we're going to talk about some uh, cover letters and this is like you know we have car for the resumes and we have Ada for the cover letters so you want to have um, grab their attention get their interest up um, you know, infuse some desire and call to action. So for getting your attention, you might want to talk about something in the news that relates to them. Um, you might want to tell a story, you know, your story. I have used um, quotations with some of my clients to talk about, uh, they have a quotation and they say how it relates to their um, management style or philosophy, career philosophy. Um, you can ask a question like, you know, would you want to have uh, someone who's going to increase your sales? And then you go on. Um, you can also just repeat their needs back to them. You know, you're looking for someone who has a broad base of accounting skills and then address it on from there. When you're talking about interest, you go back to that, what's in it for me? You want to talk about how you can help them to, you know, get their interest going. Now, when it comes to desire, that's something that you also give them examples of what you've done before to help them maybe desire you. Uh, those can be done in bullets. You don't want to have them exactly the same as you did on your resume, but you can use similar um, information. And then you want to do a call to action on the bottom. Now, I know um, it, it used to be in cover letters where, you know, everyone ended saying, um, you know, I'll call you next week and, you know, set up a time interview. Well, things have kind of toned down since then. You know, you, you want to be um, respectful but not fawning. You don't want to be too in your face. So. You might want to add something um, like, I'll, uh, I look forward to discussing this with you over a brief phone call or something like that. Unless, again, maybe, you know, if you are in sales, maybe you do want to be forward like that and say, I'll call you next week. But you also have to make sure if you put something down like that, that you are actually going to be following through on it. Because you don't want to say that and then you never call them. So again, just like CAR, you have to remember ADA. So for your cover letter format, um, you want to have a style to it. You want to have it uh, formatted similar uh, or actually the same as your resume. And I'll show you an example of one. So if you've used color and you know certain shading on your resume, you want to use the same thing on your cover letter. As far as the length goes, not more than one page. Um, you know, I, I've had people say, well, I want to send, you know, two or three pages to tell them all my experience. Well, it's not really, um, people have a shortest attention span. You know, I, I, I read recently that humans have the attention span of like a gnat. So, you know, you need to get to the point as quickly as you can. Um, and that actually goes for your resume as well. I didn't mention this earlier, but people often ask about the length of a resume. Um, the rule of thumb is two pages. If you're a new grad, might be a page. 
if you're doing something that's a networking resume that you're just going to be handing out to people that's sort of a different animal that would be one page a CV for use in you know medical or academia uh, is going to be several pages generally a resume for most people is two pages and I will tell you something and I love this quote that I looked up today uh, it's attributed to Ben Franklin and it said if I had more time I would have written a shorter letter it's much more difficult to write short than it is to write long and it's a problem that some people have with their resumes and also with their cover letters now just a little note about eNotes because you may be sending your resume uh, via email to someone and you want to put the cover letter in the resume um, within the email you might want to attach it as well but you want to put it in the email so when it comes to something like that you want to have it be maybe a third to a half a page an email page something that runs between like 99 and 120 words you want to take your cover letter and just extract the most important things if you're going to be putting it in an e-note so that's very very important to remember okay so here's one cover letter um, that I have this person you know you want to put the uh, position uh, towards the top so they know immediately what position you're responding to and here is someone saying that they are uh, they are um, looking for a public relations opportunity I am so sorry about that um, and then on the bottom they say let my talents work for you my experience combined blah 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 I want to discuss during an interview now the next cover letter is a little bit different um, here is someone also looking for a VP director of operations position and one of the things that we did with this person was on the top of his resume uh, he was described as a discerning leader, a strategic thinker, and a problem solver. So in the cover letter, we decided to take those three things and put a little bullet about each one talking about that. Again, he closes the letter that he'd be happy to call and uh, discuss their needs. But this person was not in sales, so he was not saying, I'm going to call you next week okay so now we have this new LinkedIn program for job seekers it, it actually came out I believe about six weeks ago and it's a way for you to tell employers you're looking without your boss finding out and it's free so <clears throat> what you do is you go to your LinkedIn profile and you click on the jobs uh, and preferences and you can go into the screen and let recruiters know that you're open to being contacted uh, for a new position. You can do so many things with this. It's really a, a great opportunity. It's not something that shows up on your profile for everyone to see. And um, LinkedIn tries to protect you so that your current employer won't find out. So it allows you to set your preferences for location. You can add more than one location. So if you're thinking of, of moving or you're open to working in a few different areas, you can include them. Uh, you can pick the level of experience from entry level to an executive level. And I'll be showing you a picture of this in a minute. You can pick industry, again, more than one, size of company, where you can decide, you know, maybe you want to work for a mid-sized company, maybe you want to work for a large corporation. And you can talk about, um, you can specify the types of opportunities and job titles. So here's what it looks like, uh, part of what it looks like. So here, you can click here where, what you're looking for in terms of your experience, you click on that. You click on here, of course you have to go with LinkedIn's um, industries that they have already on there, but you're able to pick a few. 
based on experience. So you can go in there and play with these things. The, the way they hide it from your bosses, let's say I work for Walmart. So on my LinkedIn profile, it says, you know, I indicate that I'm working for Walmart. Now, LinkedIn says that all of the companies on there have particular identifying numbers. So if I'm working for Walmart, recruiters with that identifying number will not be able to see my preferences. You know, is this foolproof? No. You know, a contingency recruiter may see that, and um, but you know, it's unlikely they're going to go back and tell. Um, and this is something that is available only to recruiters using the recruiter program, but you know, there are thousands of them using this. So it's very, um, very simple. It'll take you maybe 10 minutes to set up, and it really gives you the opportunity to look for a job without your boss knowing. And they did this for recruiters as well, because when you're a recruiter, it's not um, always so easy to contact people. Uh, but this way, you know that if you want to contact someone, that your contact will be welcome. Okay, so we're coming to the end now. Um, we've talked about removing any missteps, so you want to take out those things that make you look make you look old, make you look dated. You want to add great content, so you want to use your car for your achievements. You want to finish with style, so you want to take that great content and wrap it up in a really nice package so that, you know, um, employers will want to pick up your resume. And then your cover letter, remember, attention, interest, desire, and action, and also the LinkedIn's new job seeker program. As I mentioned, it is free, so, so you can certainly avail yourself of that. Um, I do have an offer for you. Um, I will give anyone from this webinar uh, $50 off a custom package. This is good through the end of this month. And your coupon code is STAG50. Um, and this is me if you want to reach out to me. Uh, so that's it, Julie, if you want to come up with some questions. Well, thank you so much. That was fantastic. I think we all learned a ton. Um, so yes, we have had a few questions come in, so let's get right to it. Um, first of all, how do you structure your resume for us homemakers who have been out of the workforce for 10 to 15 years? Do you have any advice for this alumna? Well, I'll tell you, it, it is difficult. Um, you may want to go uh, with a functional resume which focuses on skills rather than the reverse chronological that's the preferred format. However, um, there are pitfalls for that uh, in the sense that people think that you know you may be hiding something if you go functional. One thing you can do um, is use sort of a hybrid where <coughs> excuse me, um, like the examples that I showed you talking about those achievements, you can talk about achievements from earlier on, and then you know you have your uh, chronological further down in the resume. Okay, I think that makes sense. Um, hold on one second; they're coming in quickly. Here we go. Um, can you? Explain oh, I'm sorry. Can I add one thing? Oh yes, of um, course. Been out of the workforce, but you're volunteering. You can use that as like employment. And just note that it's volunteer, but you can use that. Doesn't need to be paid. So if it's in your chronolog chronological uh, resume as a volunteer position, you can, yes, you can. You can use that. You know, you have to note that it's that it was volunteer. But you know, if you're on the board of the PTA or something, you know, that's leadership. You know, so. You think about that. So I'm sorry, go great. on to the next question. That's great. Okay, can you explain the e-note again? Is that email? Yes, an e-note would be something that you're sending um, to an employer. If you're, if you're submitting where you're attaching your resume, you might be attaching the cover letter, but you, know, you don't want to just take the whole cover letter and paste it into the email. You want to write something based on that cover letter that's much, much shorter, you know, maybe 120 words um, 
in that email, maybe a, you know, an intro, a couple of bullets and your signature, something that will make them want to open the resume. Okay, and this next question is um, goes off of that. Should the ADA rules be used when sending introductory or follow-up email to, to a new contact? Um, if you're, you know, if you're looking, if you're looking for a job with them, um, then, you know, you might want to talk about seeing something in the news. You might want to talk about, um, you know, you enjoyed meeting with them or your conversation. If there's an opening, here's what, how I might be able to help you. I'm not exactly sure. If you're talking about a thank you note that you send after, um, that wouldn't be the same format. You would want to go in on a thank you note and, um, of course, you know, thank them for the opportunity, ask for the job at the end, but it's also an opportunity for you to sell yourself a little bit more. And, you know, when we walk out of an interview, at least for me, you walk out and you're like, oh, I should have said this or that. So it's your opportunity to, you know, say something that maybe you left out or address a need that came up during the interview. Okay, great. But now for an introductory email, should we just uh, be as brief as possible? Maybe condense what yeah, you we would have done. Yeah, you want you know you want to be brief. You don't you know if if somebody opens an email and it's like paragraph and paragraph, it, it's just too much. Right. Um, it's not going to be read. Yeah. It, no, probably not. You know. Plus, it's also you can't um, delineate different areas like you can as much with with a, a resume so you know nobody wants to look at big blocks of text okay great now the um, I see that the job seekers address is included on your samples of resumes and cover letters it was my understanding that it should not be included what are your thoughts uh, the home address yes um, well I'll tell you something there are um, there are different schools of thought some employers will throw a resume out if it doesn't have an address. Um, they do like to know where you live. If you're filing something online, you may have to put in your address. I encourage my clients to do it. In the end, it's their resume. Some choose not to, but um, I advise them to do it. If you're looking, say you're in Connecticut, but you want a job in Boston, um, it's if, if possible, it's good to get some kind of an address in Boston that you can use. Okay. Um, Even if it's a PO box that you're renting in, you know, in Boston. Oh, good. That's helpful. Uh, can what are your thoughts about putting uh, the following on a resume: credit score, Myers Briggs, no. profiles, no. astrological signs? No. <laughs> No, none of that. You know, you have to think about things like that in, in two different ways. First thing, um, you know, you're, you're wasting space. That, that space that you could better use to put something in there that employers are really going to um, not, it's not going to be relevant to them. And I will tell you about, uh, about something, and, and this is about LinkedIn, but it's a similar kind of thing. When I was recruiting, you know, you look at all kinds of pictures, and um, I had a, a LinkedIn profile, profile come up with a woman in her wedding gown. I mean, the veil and everything. Well, you know what? I didn't even want to contact her, because if she thought that that was appropriate for LinkedIn, I didn't want to talk to her. So you got to think about things like that, too. Okay. Great. Does that make sense? It does. Here's another great question. I work for a major insurer for 25 plus years, most of my adult life. I recognize that this may be viewed negatively or positively. In terms of content style, how can I increase likelihood of this being viewed in a positive manner? Um, you know, it's not, it's not such a bad thing. Um, it, it's really not. Uh, the, the main thing, if you've been there for, you said, 20 years, is you want to show progression. So, you know, if you've had the same job for all, all of that time, which is probably unlikely, um, then that might be viewed as a negative. But when you're showing people, if you're showing progression, that you've held a position and then you've moved to another position and you've moved to another position throughout that time, 
um, then that's not negative. It's showing growth and momentum. One thing that you want to remember is, say you start out as, I don't know, uh, some sort of a clerk position, and then you're, you're promoted to manager, maybe in a different department, and if you were recruited to come into that department by that department head because they saw something you did, you know, that's worth mentioning. Okay, great. How about if you want to change careers, should you morph actual work into something comparable to job posting requirements? Um, if I'm understanding you correctly, I think the answer would be yes. Um, what you want to do if you're changing careers is you want to highlight the skills and the achievements that would be relevant in your target position. Um, I did this myself uh, when I moved from being a writer to being a vocational counselor. Now, I was going to school, you know, at Fairfield, so I had that in my favor. I, I had that on my resume. I was going to be graduating fairly soon with my master's. But I, when I, I also focused on the things that would be relevant. They wanted me to write reports, so I talked to them about how my writing skills, because that would be relevant. So find things that you're doing that are relevant um, to the, the next career. Great. Okay. Um, are there any key words you want to avoid? Well, you don't want to have your your um, resume filled with cliches like, you know, out of the box thinker and team player and you know some of those words. There's there's lists of them if you go online. The Career Builder does surveys with. Um, employers every year but you know you don't want to use those pat keywords things that have been used over and over and over again and you don't want to you know you don't want to talk about being a team player you want to show something on your resume that shows you being a team player you know maybe working um, working on a project you know an interdepartmental project something like that rather than saying I'm a team player or you know I am a great communicator well show an example of that Okay, perfect. Thank you. Um, if you have been out of work due to an illness, but you don't want to be overlooked, is there any recommendations? Um, have you well, run into that at all, Annette? Um, I I wouldn't. Yeah, I wouldn't. Um, I, I mean, I wouldn't mention. You know, you don't want to mention something like that in a resume. Um, probably not in the cover letter either. Uh, you might want to save that for the interview. Uh, you know, it's hard to know about specifics. Uh, it's nice if you can highlight something else you were doing during that time, you know, to, to cover up sort of having a gap. But, you know, the thing is that stuff happens. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you don't want to ever lie, but you don't want to be um, overly forthcoming. You know, if, for example, if, you're, if you left a job, you don't want to talk about why you left. So I'm sorry, it's hard to be. Yeah, exactly. I know. Specific or something like that. Okay. Um, so for somebody who um, her situation, she works and studies. She works and she studies full time. Um, I, I must be um, in school, probably in graduate school. I want to apply for management jobs. How can I sell my skills, combining my ability to handle both my job and school at the same time? So just focusing on that ability to. Um, you, you can talk. You can talk about that. You know, I did that myself. I did my bachelor's and my master's while working full time, and I had talked about it. You know, juggling my you know full time work and part time school schedule. I was able to blah blah blah. You know, I mean, I wouldn't go over and over it, but you certainly can mention that, you know, in your summary statement, if you're, if you're in school right now, but, you know, say you have a, a great GPA or you're going to be graduating with honors despite holding down a full-time position, something like that. Okay. That's great. Um, okay, so a question about... Um, how do you craft a self-employment 
uh, moving from self-employment to employee? That's a little vague. I'm not sure. Well, you know, again, you know, you, you want to um, say you, you've had your own PR firm and you want to work for a company. Um, that's something that you, you might want to um, talk about in the, in the cover letter, you know, that you're, you're looking for um, employment with an entrepreneurial, um, you know, you have an entrepreneurial spirit. But again, you know, you, you want to talk about what you're doing. What you might want to consider, um, which can be effective, is um, maybe you're the CEO, but you're, you're doing um, business development or something like that, that you don't necessarily want to be putting yourself as the CEO, but putting yourself in another position so that it's not readily apparent that it's your company. Like, you know, if you're the, the running your own PR firm, um, you might put your title as, you know, public relations something rather than owner CEO on your resume. Okay, great. Um, so that can be effective. Okay. Um, looks like I have one last question here. Do you okay. recommend two different resumes, one for the ATS system and one for distribution? I understand that the ATS will reject fancy formatting. Well, here's the thing. Um, the ATS, uh, there's, there's so many of them out there. Um, my understanding of the ATS is you know, if you put in a text box, um, it might screw up the way uh, the ATS reads it. Um, I, I will say that um, I, my understanding also is that it's better to submit a Word document, although some people say PDF. It's, um, you know, if, if you're, you don't want to include information that's important only in a, a box if you choose to, I don't use those myself, but if you do that, uh, you want to also include it in the resume. As far as things like, you know, it might not pick up if you use an unusual bullet, but that really doesn't matter. Um, you can have, which I suggest, is to, if, if you're having something that you're going to um, sort of cut and paste into something in an online system, that you use a text plain text resume for that and then upload your you know word document so but as far as fancy fonts I mean you know if you use a, a, a different font unless it's something that's you know really unusual there shouldn't be a problem with that right but you also want to be careful I've seen some actually I've seen these come through from people uh, uh, people I ended up working with as clients who put their name um, in the header. So, you know, you don't want to put anything in the header or footer that is, you know, relevant because, you know, they may not read that. Oh, okay, great. Boy, right, thank you. Um, quickly, uh, the, our last question here is about age discrimination. And if we think it's still out there today, um, I think by the fact that, um, Annette covered quite a bit on how to not make yourself look old in a resume that it does still exist. <laughs> but uh, this alum well, is almost 60, so, um, and still viable out there in the workforce. So any words of encouragement? Yeah, you know what, here's the thing. Um, is there age discrimination? Yes, you know, there is. But there's a lot of discrimination. You know, they, they may not want to hire you because you're too young, you know, or whatever I mean there's there's so many things that where you know it's a lot of stuff is about culture fit but you know when you go on your job interview you don't want to talk about well oh my daughter you know told me that or back in the day you know you don't want to talk like that you want to be up on your skills you want to have things you know maybe you want to be on Twitter and have your Twitter handle on your resume or certainly on your LinkedIn profile uh, you want to have a, an attractive photo. Now, I worked with a woman when I was recruiting, this is a few years ago, and she was in her 60s. Now, I only know that because she told me, but she was a dynamo. She looked great in her picture. Um, I didn't place her, but she found another job because 
you know, you can't let that hamper you. You can't say, oh, I'm too old. You know, you want to, but you want to be fresh. You, know, you don't want to have the same hairdo that you had 20 years ago. You know, you want to have nice, new, um, fashionable things. So, but a lot of it is the, is the speech too, you know, that you, that you, that you don't want to be, um, pretending someone you're, be someone you're not, but you want to be your maybe younger self. <laughs> Well, I think uh, you've done a fantastic job, Annette. You have answered a variety of questions being shot at you <laughs> at record pace. But, well, um, it's my pleasure. <laughs> thank you so much for spending this time with us today. Uh, well, you're more than welcome. Um, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, we appreciate it. And everybody, everybody that's on still, you know, um, Annette can also be found on our website. She's on the Career Coaches um, page, so her information is there as well. Um, so please contact her if you need additional help directly. All right, so everybody have a great day. Thanks, Annette. We'll uh, hope to uh, have you on again soon and, uh, and talk more. Thank you. Okay. Bye now. Take care. Bye-bye.